Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update, give or take, definitely take in this case, of the miniatures I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel. It has been a little bit, been very busy, so there isn't even that many things to talk about really relatively to the more recent ones. I've been very busy working on a lot of video projects for my gaming YouTube channel, which is eaten into my time, which I would normally be using for painting. So I just haven't had the time to get through a lot of stuff, but that's okay, we still have some things to talk about. Uh, we have some Marvel Crisis Protocol on the left here to going right for the first time oof, in, in literally months, definitely this year, so it's been a long time. We have some more Warhammer Warcry slash, slash Age of Sigmar, we have some Dead by Daylight the board game which you've already seen if you've been following that series. Then we have an entire team for Rumble Slam, the Knights of the Squared Circle I think is their full name. And then we have a little bit of Batman the Miniature Game, just because I was in the mood to paint spooky pumpkins. So not that much to talk through, I'm sure I'll still end up rambling, but that's okay, well, let's get started. So let's start with Umbaku, in fact let's just move the camera a little bit and zoom in to hopefully give you a proper look at him. An alternative leader for the Wakandan affiliation bonus, uh, affiliation bonus, affiliation for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, the white gorilla power or whatever it is that he has, it has an official name, I think it's called Mjari or something, I can't pronounce Wakandan words. Anyway, in terms of colours, a lot of this is just the Gracier base coat, his skin tone is Fire Slayer Flesh. Uh, Skeletal Horde was used just very lightly and slightly watered down on the edges of the fur because it does have this kind of coloration near the edges. A little bit of snake bite leather for the inside of the presumably skin he's wearing as his cape with some non-oil to give it definition on the back there and his staff was rattling grime I believe yeah yeah for the base it's what I do for all the crisis protocol bases basilicanum grey aggressor shade then storm vermin fur over it trying not to get anything in the edges because those have already kind of been shaded by the, the layers you've done before fun model fun character he has been in one battle report already and he came in a box with claw who I guess we can just go straight on to talking about. I hope that was mostly in focus. Claw, I've got some stuff to say about, and he has not been in a battle report yet. The miniature was one of the more frustrating to put together of Crisis Protocol miniatures I remember. Uh, in fact, it isn't even done correctly. The, the part here is just kind of sitting. I mean, it's glued in now, but that is not where it's meant to be. It's incredibly fiddly because you've got to slot this one into the, he's, he's sound based if you aren't aware. So he's kind of always transmitting himself, so there's kind of like after images or duplicates, depending on how you want to look at it, that's why he's got two hands up here. It's a neat model, don't get me wrong, and it's a very, very cool pose, but it was just so frustrating to put together. I'm pretty sure I haven't done the bit that's touching the floor there correctly, and as I say, that's just totally wrong. I just put it there to kind of bridge the gap a little bit. So it was just a mess, and very frustrating overall to, to try and do not one of their best in terms of clear instructions and just not one of their best to put together even if you fully understand the instructions. Anyway, I used Bow Red and then in the sections where it was blue, that is the Frost Heart Blue, which is the lighter contrast blue, uh, along with some Luxian Purple as well, just kind of mixing it a little bit where applicable with some Non Oil as well and some Lead Belcher Silver. I don't think there's really anything else to say about it. The, I, I, looking at it, I know it's wrong. I. If I just showed this to someone, they'd, they'd probably not realise that it hasn't been put together right. In terms of points of connection for the one that's jumping out the, the after image, you've got the leg there, then the leg is sticking through the chest here, so it's kind of connected here, but there's no set point. It's, this is definitely style over form, I guess, is that the expression? Like, they, they went for a very nice looking fancy dynamic pose, which is great, but they forgot that You've got to put it together, and it, that was just incredibly frustrating. But he is done now. He will see the light of day at some point. He's not part of the Rokandan affiliation. He's criminal syndicate leader, I think, if I remember rightly. So we'll need to see some... Well, he is just an arms dealer, so I guess that sort of makes sense. We'll see him in the future. But yeah, I just wanted to moan a little bit about how frustrating this was to actually put together. So we'll move on now to some more of the Rottmeyer Creed for Warhammer Warcry. I think I said for Age of Sigmar earlier. Um, they are actually specifically for Warcry. I keep forgetting that. There's a dog's hair on that base. So I did talk about these for the first time last video. 
Oh, you know what, before I forget to mention, just to go back to Crisis Protocol briefly, I have been assembling and starting work on the newer starter set for Crisis Protocol. Uh, I had some warnings from my friend who's already done it that some of them might have been a little awkward. Black Widow, a little bit. Uh, one of the forms of Carol Danvers that's in the box, kind of. Nothing as bad as that. No, nowhere close. It was totally smooth compared to Claw. Anyway, got four more. This is three of just their standard dudes and then one more that's on the stilts that I mistook for a normal guy last time because the stilts are the one, dif well, and the shoulder pad I guess, are the differentiating feature for them being of a higher class. Uh, with the completion of these four and what we showed off last time, that leaves the big boss and the heavy which is kind of like a guy with huge claws, bone claws, or bamboo claws, I'm not quite sure what they're made of yet. So I did talk about the colours I was using last time, but essentially it's a mix of Militarm green, Striking Scorpion green, uh, the other green, Mantis Warrior green, that's the one, with some uh, Rattling Grime, Skelter Horde, and Agra Shade. It's it's not that complicated, the model is doing a lot of work here, because they're they're very detailed. And then these are just the three dudes. I've gone for the, the kind of sword and board setup for them. You can do them with dual wielded daggers, I think is the alternative. I like the look of the shields better, plus I think they might be the better option for the tabletop. Not that I usually particularly care about that, but I think it is. This guy has a skull mask on. They've got a skull motif on, like some of them have uh, belt buckles that are skulls. And their shields kind of have that going for them as well there. Very fun aesthetic and not something you would normally associate with Nurgle, which is why they're they're nice. It's a different take on like people worship chaos gods in different ways, and these people live in a swamp, and this is just this is how they've taken to worshiping. I don't even know in the lore if they know they're worshiping Nurgle, but either way, they, they give off a, a different vibe to um, the Rockbringers. I, I think I still prefer the Rockbringer aesthetic, just to be clear, but. These are a very fun, different way to bring that across. And this one's blowing on his blowpipe. He's where getting ready to. He's about to hit someone. With the, they all have poison darts as one of their abilities. And once again, the texture paint is just the AKA technical one. The Plague World with Aggressor Shade over the top once it was dry. Simple as that. So I think I've left the most complicated two until last. I mean, the boss probably won't be that complicated. But the heavy, he's got a lot of good stuff going on. So we might see those next time, with them being done, and then we'll hopefully get them in a Warcry Battle Report, because I'm curious how they'll do against a few different foes. So speaking of already being in videos, the Hag and the Huntress have already been shown in the Dead by Daylight board game series, if you've been following that, thank you very much. In terms of how I painted them, I, can't, I was winging it with the Hag, I'm going to have to try and remember here. So, let's see, I think, yep, okay, yep, it's coming back to me when I look at it. So I think I used Rottmeyer Creed for her skin tone, and then I let it dry and did a dry brushing of Ulthwing Grey, because it kind of gives it that, that brings out the detail of the face and then that kind of thing. And then it's Militarum Green for her toga, whatever you want to call it, that she's wearing, with some blood for the blood god on the hand. I did try and scrawl her, like, if you don't know how she works, in the video game she puts down these runes that kind of make versions of her pop up to scare people. So I kind of tried to do that on the base, it didn't really work out super well. I did it in the base coat and then went over it with Agra's Earth Shade so it didn't look pure white. Uh, but yeah, didn't turn out that great. It's meant to look like one of her rune markers, it's not quite the right shape. Uh, but if I had a finer brush it would have looked better. Still, it implies it, it lends itself to her mechanics in the game so it's not too bad. And then the very very tall Huntress, she is very tall in the video game, they've replicated that with her miniature, she's much taller than the survivors and a lot of the other killers for that matter. She chucks hatches at hatchet, what is the plural of hatchet? Hatchet sees? That doesn't sound right. That's weird, I've never had to think about that. What is the plural of hatchet? I'm going to look it up later. Anyway, Space Wolves Grey for her trousers. I use Skeletal Horde for her shirt and the new Flame something orange. It's, it's like Griffin but slightly warmer. I always forget the name of it. Uh, just the base coat for her mask with some Volupus pink in the ears. Agar Shore Shade over everything. Blood for the Blood God of course because they're murderers. Oh there's some uh, snakebite leather in there as well on the straps for her belt and such. And her, her pouches there on her belt. Fun model. 
very in keeping, oh, if it would stay in focus please, very in keeping with how she is in the video game as well. Don't have much else to say about her, you've seen her if you've watched that series. I do plan to paint up some more killers at some point, I haven't got any on the table currently because I've got so many projects ongoing, uh, I'm finding it hard to prioritise but hopefully I will get started on the collector's edition killers because so far I've only shown off the killers that you would get if you find the base box since that's the version that you can still find. So hopefully I will get around to, I want to, I will probably check in advance who can actually play the solo variant because some of them have abilities where it doesn't really work and that might influence who I go for next but we'll see. So next we have the Knights of the Squared Circle, the entire box that you get if you buy them for Rumble Slam. They're part of a uh, very flamboyant, let's say, uh, casino called The Keep I believe and I actually used for most of them, for the pink parts of all of them, one of Army Painter's 2.0 speed paint range, which is the first time I've, I didn't try their, their version 1 speed paints at all. I just wanted a brighter pink than Volupus Pink, because Volupus Pink is very, very dark. And I wanted a bright, uh, bright, very bright pink. There we go, that's hard to say. Because the official paint job has them being very, very vibrant pink. So I used that instead, uh, it seemed fine, it dried nicely, um, when I applied it quite thickly, which you can see on the big knight here, and I don't know any of their names offhand, I apologise for that, but the, the, the heavy they have, the, the very thick armour that's actually just haunted, you can see kind of like in certain areas it is quite dark, that was it fully applied, um, so I watered it down a little bit with some white and then kind of tried to highlight a little bit. He's got this spooky thing going on. I think I might try and blend the hair a little bit better. In the official paint job, he does have it going white as it gets closer to the tip, but I don't feel like I've done a fantastic job with the blending there. So I might change it a little bit. Lid Belter Silver for his armor, and then just non oil over it to add a bit of definition. Uh, not much else to say about that until we see them on the table, which will be relatively soon. We'll, we'll definitely be using them whenever the next opportunity arises to play Rumble Slam, and we'll get to see how they do. So. Uh, impressed with the Army Painter 2.0 speed paints. Uh, well, the exact one that I've tried so far didn't seem any different from contrast paint to me. And uh, as I understand it, the version ones they took way too long to dry, like ridiculously long periods of time to dry. Didn't see anything like that. So I, it looks to me like they've sorted whatever that issue was. Anyway, next we have these two gentlemen wearing very, very little. This one, Fire Slayer Flesh for his skin tone, Lead Belcher Silver. No oil for the silver parts and the pink I was just talking about. No much else to say about them. A very very quick paint job on these, and simple as. And he has a friend who's basically the same, just gulam and flesh for his skin tone instead. Again, trying to match up the official paint jobs as best I can. And other than that, exactly the same for the rest of them. He is very very muscly, which made contrast very easy to use because it just sank into all the muscle lines. So he is done. And then to round out their million dosh or however close to it they get. They've got a couple of goblins. This is the most dressed person in the uh, the group. His little goblin here. Uh, his skin tone, I believe I used, oh, it wasn't Gulliman Flesh, it was the other kind of white skin tone that said I'll do. I'm blanking on the name currently. Dark Old Flesh, that's the one. So I did that, Snake Bite Leather for the boots and the gloves and the same, I think I did use a little bit of Lupus Pink here uh, for this, but again, the watered down the pink from Armour Painter was more what I was looking for. Yeah, these little guys are hard to get in focus, sorry about that. With a little bit of a wash as well where applicable to try and add shadow. And then this guy, he's carrying a helmet for one of their, their lieges, I guess. If they're squires, he's only got one boot on and he's barely wearing his clothing, it's kind of fallen off. Uh, same skin tone for him, black for his hair. And that's, that's about it. Very fun, very thematic um, little group to try of a newer casino. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. So they'll definitely, as I say, be in the, the next Rumble Slam video. And finally, what better way to end a video going live in April than two spooky pumpkin demons. These are from the Little Nightmares box for the Scarecrow crew for the Batman miniature game. Two of them in this pose and then there's two in another pose. I currently have those on the table base code. Haven't started painting them yet. Um, not as much detail as I would like in the pumpkins on either of them. They're a bit miscast, uh, I feel, because they only seem to have one eye, unless that's on purpose. 
but the colours I decided to go with are essentially the exact same colours as the big nightmares available for the Scarecrow crew. So I'm just doing it that these are like their, their kids or little brothers or maybe they just haven't fully formed yet. So the other two that I've yet to do will be in the colour scheme of the other two I haven't used yet. Uh, this was Sigurd Burgundy, Snakebite Leather, Griffhound Orange. I kind of wish I'd used the other orange in retrospect. With Eldari Emerald and Striking Scorpion on the base with non-oil over the top. Very little miniature, so not a lot to work with. For the hay kind of coming out the hands or whatever that is, the burlap, I guess, uh, I used a little bit of Skeletal Horde, kind of watered it down a little bit. For this one, more or less the same, but Basilicanum Grey for the trousers and Talisar Blue for the, the shirt. Or, you know, the, the peasant wear he's wearing. I'm not really sure what to properly call that. Same colours used for everything else. Snape by Leather for the hel uh, helmet, <laughs> the hat. Griffin Orange for the pumpkin, with a little bit of the Striking Scorpion put inside to make it look like it's glowing. Same with the neck hole, because he's like pulling his own head off. And he's not real, you know, within game terms, he's a figment of the imagination of whoever you're playing against, so fun definitely the time of year for this absolutely definitely did not leave it a bit late it's a bit it's hard to prioritize batman stuff right now because the game still technically is not playable unless you're willing to print out ridiculous numbers of new objective cards they've still not released the card pack and there's no sign of it yet i hope it comes out soon because i would like to play the game again that would be nice and it would help me justify getting some more stuff for it painted up but in the meantime i just i can't put it at the top of the list unless i just get a hankering for it because there is more important things to be painting. And I think that about does it. Was I brief this time? I feel like I was brief but I still ramble during these so probably not. Next time on the table you're definitely going to be seeing some of the Marvel Crisis Protocol Mighty Earth Mightiest starter box because I'm almost done at the point of recording this with Iron Man at the very least and might see some more beyond that. I want to get the last two of this Warband for Warcry painted up so that would mean they're very usable. Beyond that though, uh, I'm not sure. I, I Oh, actually, I do have some Battletech in progress. So there will probably be at least one representation of Battletech next time. Gotta find time for another Alpha Strike as well. As I say, I am, I've, I've, I've taken a new direction for the gaming YouTube channel I run where I'm doing like video essay critique formats, which are very, very time consuming to do research, recording, everything like that. They're, they're a lot more time consuming than a lot of other things I do. So uh, it's, it's, difficult to find as much time as I had previously for painting. I certainly will still try, but it might be a little difficult in certain situations if I have a big project I'm working on, so uh, keep that in mind. Go check them out if you want. They are they have bad language, so not in front of your kids, but if you don't mind um, bad language and want to see me rant about video games for like an hour. Certain video games going deep into their stories and, and whatnot. Please do consider checking those out. In the meantime though, expect, now that I'm, I've gotten over that cold I had last week, last week, to be back full throttle with doing battle reports and everything else for this channel, as and when. Hope you enjoyed watching, please do remember you can show me what you've been painting. If you join my Discord or are on Blue Sky, feel free to do that. And with that, hope that inspired you to get some stuff painted. Doesn't matter if you're good at it or not, as long as you enjoy doing it. Until next time, ta for now.